What's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? What's up? You just getting more ready. How you doing today? What's up, you guys? Hey, how you doing? It's just gonna boy Randy. I hope you're having a great, growing, blessed, and prosperous day. I love you guys. I miss you so much. Mwah! Welcome to Gardening with Skinny Boy Randy. Thank you so much for being here. You could be anywhere in the gardening universe. Anywhere. But you choose to spend a little time here with me, your Skinny Boy Randy, and I appreciate you. And no, if nobody told you they love you today, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Gardening with Skinny Boy Randy, where beginners and experts are always welcome. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to click. There we go, for click. <laughs> don't forget to click like and subscribe, you guys. Click the subscribe button. Yes, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, just not the two middle fingers. Okay, okay, I love you guys, you're the best. Also, leave a comment, share the video with all your social media, you guys. I love you so much, thank you so much for being here. I'm not going to hold you long. Today, oh, oh yeah, preliminaries. Head on over to my Facebook group, Gardening with Skinny Boy Randy. Beginners and experts are welcome. That's the name of that group over there as well. If I can't answer a question here, they'll be able to help you over there, okay? So you can just slide right on over there and join that group and leave a shout out letting us know you came from Skinny Boy Randy on YouTube, okay? Okay! Also have Instagram and Twitter. So please share with all your social media, you guys. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, today I'm not going to hold you long. Just want to talk to you about some gardening mistakes when it comes to your raised bed. Okay, you guys, this is my raised bed. First time doing a raised bed. This is a four by six raised bed. And I started it last, uh, earlier part of this year. Yeah, we're not done with the year yet. Okay, I'm ready to jump into 2021 because I'm sick of 2020. Okay, okay, it's 2020 has just done too much. It's like a mad dog 2020 for real. Lord, it have mercy. But, uh, oh, I don't know nothing about that mad dog, y'all. Now, anyway, <laughs> this is my raised bed. It's uh, four foot across by six foot long, okay? Width and length. So, one of the first mistakes that um, I realized, I had my raised bed in the back of my yard. Now I have it closer to the front in full sunlight. Because what happened was, when it was back there, my huge tree that I have in the backyard, like, the hugest tree it's like the tree of life it's so big <laughs> um it would shade the raised bed all day so what i did was i took it and i moved it up here refilled it and it gets full sun if it gets too much sun i can always put up a sunblock or shade cloth or something like that versus being in the shade and not getting any sun and then i'd be stuck so just plan your garden based on your lighting now my sun rises in the east which is over here. I see it every morning. It rises in the east and sets in the west over there, okay? So, this gets at least six to eight hours of sun every day. Every day. If the sun is out, it's going to get it. So, you want to get at least six to eight hours. Most plants require six to eight hours. Now, a lot of shade-loving plants, you can put in shade environments, but always read your seed packets, find out the, the sun requirement. And then I found out about a website you can go to called SunCalc, like Sun Calculate, but it's just C-A-L-C dot net, I think, or dot, uh, yeah. Just type in Sun Calc, like Sun Calculation, and it'll pull up your exact location, and it'll show you the range of sun in your area. Yeah, in real time. And it'll show you how your sun works in your area. You guys, did you know that? Okay, okay. I'm going to try to put the link in the box. If not, just remember to go over to Sun Calculation on the web and look it up, you guys. Okay, also, watering. Well, soil. Filling it up. Let's start with that. Let's go backwards. You got your raised bed up. You put it in the light. Now you want to fill it with some good soil, you guys. That's the one thing I would say. Spend a little bit of money on. Not a whole lot. Because we ain't got no money, okay? A little bit. We can spend a little bit. We got a little bit of money. But we ain't got a whole bunch of money. We ain't got no money for a whole bunch of soil. And these things cost a lot to fill up if you're filling them up by the bag. Now, we have a, 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 a dirt company down the road. So we just got a truckload, which was a blessing. Thank you, God, for the dirt load. And my neighbor, who is awesome. So we had that. But some people have to buy the bag of soil. So if you're going to have to buy soil, think about how big you want your raised bed, y'all. Because that, that can add up. That can really add up. And you want to use good soil. Like, uh, I would have made this video earlier, but I was waiting on some deliveries. So I got this black gold, which is some natural organic potting mix. And it has some worm castings and other nature things in it. And then I also bought this, you guys. I'm going to try this out. This is compressed soil, organic potting mix. Now, it's really tight, and it's compressed, 
So it's it supposed to once you add water like a cocoa core brick, but it's potting mix. So this little bag is gonna give me four times its size. So you guys, you wanna make sure you're mixing in good things in your soil. Like if you wanna use some organic bone meal, which breaks down, you know, mother nature breaks that down over time. Some plants require a lot of nitrogen, so you might wanna invest in getting you some nitrogen. This breaks down in water and you can, uh, you know, give your soil some good nitrogen. Also, your fertilizer, make sure you're getting fertilizers in your soil. If you have a small raised bed, put you some vermiculite in there. To me, everybody doesn't do that. I like to do it because it helps with circulation and moisture. So yeah, always invest in your soil, you guys. Okay, number three, watering. I know it's fall and you're thinking, okay, I don't have to water the garden as much. You know, it gets misty at night, and when you come out, all the leaves are wet, like like on this eggplant. When I come out, everything is like soaking wet. You guys, I am so shocked. Look at this eggplant tree. They're everywhere. Can you guys see that? They're beautiful. But yeah, and it looks like it's been watered overnight, or it looks like it rained, but it really didn't. It's just the, the morning dew. But the soil looks wet in the morning as well from the morning dew. Huh, within the hour when that sun comes up, that thing is dry as a bone, okay? Okay, it can be dry as my lips sometimes when I do a lot of talking on this video. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and you know, it can get really dry doing a lot of talking. And I get to rambling, and I don't know how to stop. And uh, yeah, and that's what happens with my soil. <laughs> it's bone dry in an hour. So what you wanna do is make sure you keep your, uh, your soil watered early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Well, it's cooler now, so we can kind of water ours anytime we want to because it's not extremely hot and the sun is not going to, you know, evaporate all the water or burn up anything. So, yeah, make sure you're watering your plants uh, and your raised bed very well. Also, if you have mulching, some people like mulching. I don't use mulching, but it is a great thing to use to cover your garden, especially in the extreme, extreme heat. I prefer the mulching during the hot summer days when you want to keep moisture in because it's so hot and the sun will evaporate it or even cook your soil. But you can do what you want to do with the mulch. Here in Zone 7, Richmond, Virginia, in the fall and winter, I don't really use the mulch because the water doesn't evaporate as quickly because of the weather. And also your spacing. Make sure you're spacing your plants you know according to what you're going to grow you don't want to put a sun loving plant right under this eggplant tr tree i call it an eggplant tree it's supposed to be an eggplant but it, it's turned into an eggplant tree let me just grab this you guys so you guys can follow along but yeah look at this eggplant you see these eggplants in here you see all these you guys and some people want to know they say they have eggplants but they have flowers, but they're not getting the eggplant itself. See these purple flowers? See, I have eggplants coming everywhere. But when you see that purple flower, that needs to be pollinated, you guys. Get your paintbrush and circle all around it real good and get that pollen circulated to that stem in the middle of the yellow circle, okay? That's how you do that. But get your spacing. Now, these are my summer peppers that I left in here, but I went on ahead and planted some cabbages around there. See, they're coming up some beans in the corner so I know they'll get sunlight some more jalapenos here but yeah oh, look at this pepper plant now I picked all the peppers off of here the other day y'all and look now see normally these would be summertime growing things but they're just they didn't even have this many peppers on them in the summertime you guys more okra so as you can see I had an okra plant in here look how thick that is peppers bell peppers oh, uh, eggplant that's another eggplant over there that I need to lift up it fell over and then I pulled up everything that was not needed and as you can see here are my fall edges so I spaced things out so that they could grow to their full capacity now, I can also go in here and thin some of these out. There's some sweet potatoes still growing in here, y'all. Yeah. So, space your garden. You don't want it too full, but you can get, you know, quite a bit if you space your things, you know, properly. So, just think about your spacing, what you're going to grow. Grow what you're going to eat, okay? Don't just grow anything. Grow what you're going to eat. And also, label your stuff. 
don't forget to put your labels you guys if you don't forget if you forget to put your labels, sometimes it could be a disaster you'll just have to wait and see but some things need to be picked earlier so you don't want to just you know second guess it I know what everything in here is because I've grown it before and I know exactly what it looks like but if you're a beginner gardener when that stuff starts coming up everything looks alike so some things you want to pick earlier you don't want like certain greens to go too long because they become bitter so you want to pick them early so they can keep coming back so just remember to do your labeling that's all for today you guys this is just a randy info session okay okay i love you guys thank you so much for being here don't forget click like and subscribe i love you remember live love love you guys grow something eat it you're the best